The companies that choose to have a good employer brand are going to put the time, effort, interest, and money into developing it. This employer brand is their way of showcasing their culture. It is their way of supporting their clients and their uh, employees. It is their way of marrying their product brand into that employer brand. That's Cindy Travella. She began her career in human resource, marketing, and communications on Madison Avenue in New York City. Prior to that, she worked in corporate human resources as a training and development coordinator. Cindy has multiple years of media planning along with corporate and employer branding strategy experience. She is the co-creator of hashtag OMC chat, which stands for Open Mic Career Chat, a job seeker advocate on Twitter. She is the events manager at Talent Culture and the hashtag Work Trends events and is the chief revenue officer for WorkScene, a social platform for hiring companies to attract, convert, and hire desired talent. And today, she's here with us talking about how the employer ambassador is the best person to tell your company's story and what motivates companies to develop employer brands. She shares the difference between employer reputation and the employer brand, how companies can improve talent attraction with employee referrals, and who's responsible for employee engagement, why employees should take ownership and play their role in the process. Cindy dives into the company's obligation for diversity and the innovation that comes from having it, how companies can amplify the voice of employees, and how employer and ambassador programs can lead to new rentals or new customers. We talk about the we've always done it this way leadership mindset and the return on investment of an employer ambassador program and how it impacts net operating income. Some of the companies that are doing it right are giving their employees an opportunity or access, I should say, to social tools, right? Now, we all know mm-hmm. social media is instantaneous, so it's uh, with, with a little bit of guidance, with some content, with allowing them to have access. Employees are ready, willing, and able to advocate and to share content for their organizations. You're listening to the Multifamily Leadership Podcast with Patrick Antrim, your source for success strategies for multifamily professionals, CEOs, executive leaders, and aspiring leaders that want to drive high-performance results for their property or portfolio. This is Patrick Antrim, founder and CEO of Multifamily Leadership and producer of the Multifamily Leadership Summit, where we celebrate the best places to work multifamily. Welcome to the Multifamily Leadership Podcast, where I speak with executive leaders, authors, and business leaders on the topics that advance leadership in multifamily. It is our goal to give you insights into what top leaders are doing to drive financial results and great resident experiences for their portfolios. Now, if you want to get access to other resources such as videos, articles, show notes, other episodes of this podcast, and information on working with me or having me keynote your next event, you can visit multifamilyleadership.com. All right, I know you're excited to get right into the conversation with Cindy, but before I do, I want to take this opportunity to give a shout out to our show sponsor. Today, Audible is giving away a free audiobook and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com forward slash multifamily. And Cindy, our guest, is making the recommendation of a book. You can get it free on Audible. The book is The Power of Nice, How to Conquer the Business World with Kindness. Now, there are over 180,000 titles to choose from, from your iPhone, Android, Kindle, MP3 player, Head on over to audibletrial.com slash multifamily and download your 30-day free trial and your audio book today. You can also access the link in the show notes at multifamilyleadership.com. All right, so we have lots of questions to work through today on brand ambassadors. And one of the things that we wanted to talk about was uh, how the brand uh, ambassador relationship uh, can be developed through existing employees and today on the show, we have Cindy Travella. Uh, Cindy, thank you for joining us today. 
Thank you very much for inviting me. It's yes. a pleasure to be here. Yeah, absolutely. So, Cindy, let me ask you a question. As an employee branding expert, talent strategist, and also thought leader and curator of so much content that's serving uh, employers and, and, and consultants and practitioners around the world, what's a typical day look like for you? Uh, it's a busy day. Um, as a consultant uh, and advisor to a variety of clients, uh, they keep me pretty busy. Um, some of them uh, work in the uh, HR vendor space, um, uh, creating applicant tracking system software. Um, others work in the social sphere, uh, helping uh, their clients to create brand visibility on social platforms. Um, and others are looking f- just for some uh, support, some marketing support, which is my background. My background is in um, human resource communications and marketing. Um, and, uh, you know, just working with them on a daily basis. And, of course, you know, people are busy. Everyone is doing more with less, including all of my clients. Uh, so they, they keep me pretty busy, which keeps me out of trouble. Yes, I've I've read a lot of your work across the web, and so one one question that's um, I'm curious about, and I know many of our mm-hmm. listeners are going to be um, trying to understand is what what in your experience listening and curating this content and also producing and, and listening to clients across across the world on this this topic, what is driving do you think the motivation about developing or enhancing an employer brand? The thing about employer brand is it's foundational. So when organizations have an employer brand, and I should clarify this by saying all companies have an employer brand. Now, that can either be good, it can be mediocre, or it can be bad. The companies that choose to have a good employer brand are going to put the time, effort, interest, and money into developing it. This employer brand is their way of showcasing their culture. It is their way of supporting their clients and their uh, employees. It is their way of marrying their product brand into that employer brand. And the two, even though they are separate, they do have a common intersection in the middle where there's an overlap. So, you know, over the years, we've discovered that you know, some of the best employees turn out to have been people who purchased that product. So they were the consumers of that product uh, who said, wow, this is a great product. I love it. I love the way that this company conducts business. Um, I love the way that they conduct their customer service. That really resonates with me. So we have found that over time and research that some of the best uh, consumers actually become the employees of that organization. Yeah, that's it's an interesting point you're making there because uh, specifically speaking to the multifamily apartment industry, a lot of new employees and new associates are learning about those opportunities sometimes through uh, living in the communities of which these management companies operate. And I know I know a lot of people that have been introduced to the industry because they first experienced you know the, the lifestyle that this management company was um, putting together, assembling the product, the development of the community. Uh, I think brands today are really good at creating compelling stories to position products, get people excited about buying things. And also, maybe maybe it's just recently with the more attention on the power, and I think CEOs and the executive teams are really starting to understand that the benefits financially from having this inside-out approach, this brand of uh, the culture and, and um, the benefits of, of positioning your company this way. We have apartment communities and some uh, portfolios that, uh, let's, let's say, we're really good at developing brochure content and compelling messages and things that they control, the images and the, uh, the photography about what a great place it is to live. And then the resident comes in and the experience is a complete different experience. It's like, wow, this isn't what <laughs> I, I thought it was mm-hmm. on the brochure and the website and the, the videos and all these things that are being put together. And so 
my question to you is, is reputation have any component to this employer brand? And does that leveraging the uh, associate give it a more authentic way to sort of combat the the the, um, the reputation? Or what, what's the difference there? Well, reputation certainly is a factor. And, you know, reputation can be uh, a perception, and we all know perception can become a reality uh, for some people. When employees are brand ambassadors of their organization, they're the best spokespeople uh, in the world. They can tell the story, they can relive what it's like to be in that organization, uh, they can convey that messaging, uh, and usually that happens when companies are very supportive of an initiative like that. And they make it very easy for their employees to want to be brand ambassadors. And they make those people feel like they're stakeholders in the organization. And companies that really understand employee engagement understand that employees, one, they want to be included. They want to be made to feel welcome. They want to be made to feel included. Everyone wants to work in an inclusive workplace, an inclusive work environment, and they want to be made to feel like they're important, and that means that they're a stakeholder. When leadership in companies can involve employees at that very, I'm going to say, personal level, uh, that's when the magic happens. That's when employees go out and they are proud to talk about their organization, and they know what to say uh, to make people interested, and they do it um, because they want to. That's the best part. It's really, it's authentic. So um, a long-winded answer to your question, but that, that would be my, my response about authenticity and helping people to get on board as brand ambassadors. Yes, and the question, I mean, how do you motivate? I mean, so does a internal mm-hmm. talent development or talent, talent management team, do they, um, do you inspire them? Do you encourage uh you know, current employees to share that message or does it have to come naturally? Um, Because it seems to me that if you're focusing on essentially developing your organization, improving employee engagement and inspiring them through just becoming more internally, that would, is there a natural shift where they just want to shout from the rooftops what a great place to work is or should an HR or leader in the organization encourage or do the work, like kind of organize some things for them? I'm going to say first, um, employee engagement is not just an HR thing. It's a company thing. Everybody needs to be involved. Everybody needs to be participating. Everybody needs to be uh, supporting the cause. And, of course, it starts at the top. So people look to leadership to set the pace. They, they watch what they're doing uh, a little bit like, you know, monkey see, monkey do. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they're watching what leadership is doing. And they're uh, if they like what they see, they're going to emulate that uh, themselves. And that requires leadership to be very open in communication, to, um, again, to approach employees, not only as a whole, as a group, but also individually. You know, John Smith, this is how your role in this organization impacts the organization. That is a really powerful thing to do for an employee, to pinpoint them to the point, to to the exactness that their role is going to impact the company in these many myriad ways. And here are the benefits why. Uh, That's the kind information and the kind of conversation that employees want further employees prefer to have uh, information directly related to their jobs coming from their immediate supervisor but when it comes to big picture overall company strategy they want to hear it from from higher up they're looking to the ceo or other individuals in the c-suite to be relaying the big picture messages. So communication not only is a matter of, you know, 
uh, it coming from a direct supervisor. It's got to come from the C-suite. And then in turn, it's got to come from employees, which means that leadership and people in the C-suite need to have an interest in what their employees are saying. And that is not to say that everything that every employee says or wants or desires can be acted upon. Sometimes it's just not realistic. But when people, most people are reasonable. And when they understand that at least their voice is being heard and considered, that goes a long way with engagement. Yeah, I have to suspect that it would help in talent attraction, too. I mean, in terms of hearing from more, more you know, authentic, uh, relatable uh, people that are gonna, that are doing the work that uh, the person's considering. Is that what you're seeing? Oh, absolutely. Um, employee referrals are the number one top of the list recruiting venue for all companies. Uh, all companies are doing it right. I'll put it that way. Um, it's it's the cheapest or most cost effective uh, way that companies can recruit. Uh, nothing says, "Hey, come work here." like having somebody be a walking sandwich board or testimonial for that organization. People, because they're talking to people within the organization, they're getting a real close view on what that organization's like, Uh, the culture. Do I fit here? Um, Does their mission and vision and values align with my own personal points of view? That's very important. When companies don't hire people that align with their mission, vision, and value, that's when it goes sideways. That's when turnover starts, low productivity begins, uh, disengagement happens, lack of communication coming from that individual, and then, you know, of course, ultimately they leave or they're asked to leave. So it's very important that companies begin to really shout their mission, vision, values from the rooftop at the first touch point with job candidates. And really onboarding is not, I'm just going to skip over this real quick, but onboarding is not something that begins on day one. Onboarding begins at the first touch point. So usually it's the recruiter within an organization who's that first touch point. And that person needs to absolutely understand what the company's mission, vision, and values is and be able to convey that to people. People need to know right out of the gate, is is this going to work for me? Does this company make sense? If I'm not someone who's coming in via an employee referral and I've already been briefed on the company's culture, um, I need to find out from someone because oftentimes, even though all companies should have a career page or a career site on their overall website, uh, it isn't necessarily one that's well produced and one that really conveys the culture. So it is really incumbent upon that first touch point, usually the recruiter, to go over that with candidates and try to solidify is this going to be a working situation for and a win-win for everyone. Yeah, that's, that's a fascinating response. You mentioned earlier about employee engagement being everybody's role. I mean, everybody's job. Everybody Mm. needs to have a stake in that process. And kind of makes me think of recruiting. I mean, recruiting is the same way. I mean, those that are getting to the next level in in their career are finding that they're they're able to find great people, um, collect the right people, so that they can not only advance themselves, but also build great teams. I mean, that in, in... in the space we're talking about, I mean that's that's what it's all about, and um, you know having that uh, authentic voice. How do you uh, really wrap up what an, a brand ambassador is for employee? A brand ambassador is really an employee advocate for the organization. There are people who are happy to tell others about their employer. Uh, they do it willingly. They understand how to pitch the benefits of working where they do. They're fully engaged and they're productive employees eager to promote and defend their organization. You know, those are the things that, again, are very impactful when they're out externally or they're working in social media and they're talking about their culture. Uh, these are the things that are going to resonate with people. People want to know what is it really like to work there? Um, you know, it's one thing to have the CEO, you know, uh, have a video on the career site and talk about, you know, what a, one, what a wonderful organization we are. And they very well may be. 
but it's much more impactful to hear it from somebody who would be, uh, you know, on, on the production line, so to speak, uh, as someone who is considering working at that organization. That's interesting. So are you able to get better diversity and, and more of a, um, a rounded out approach to, to that, leveraging your, your employees that are already winning? Absolutely. You know, one of the best things that organizations can do is to have a diverse and inclusive uh, workplace. And I know a lot of people say that, and it sounds like a politically correct thing to say, but it's more, it, it, and it is, uh, but it's, it's, it's a moral thing to do. Um, it's every organization's, their obligation to give everyone a fair and even shot at employment within their organization and not you know, use biased opinions to keep people out, to wall them out, so to speak. When organizations have a diverse work culture, they're going to get a myriad of different ideas, right? Now, some of these ideas may work, some may not work. That's just the law of, you know, statistics. That's okay. But the very fact that people are putting those ideas out on the table can spark other ideas to occur. This is innovation. This is, this is an example of how companies stay fresh and stay on the cutting edge by having all of these ears working for them, right? And bringing in their unique perspective and their opinions into the workplace and helping to marry those with other people's, uh, different from themselves, other people's ideas and and thoughts and, and their opinions and perspectives. You can mold some really beautiful outcomes out of that. Uh, and sometimes not, but more often, yes. And again, research, lots of research has, is supporting this, saying diverse work cultures work. And especially today, where we have such a uh, dispersed workforce, we have people working from home, we have people working in other countries, uh, we have, per, you know, people working sometimes out of their cars, because, you know, they're, they're road warriors. So, you know, having all of these different people get together, collaborate, using whatever collaboration tool an organization has, which we really promote and hope that they do have good technology for collaboration tools, and get people talking, get people interested in what other people are saying. Um, what that person just said may not be exactly how you view it, but here's how you view it, and let's talk about how we can uh, create something out of both of our ideas. That's, that's magic. Yeah, that is interesting. And so how do you, I guess, how do you extract those employees that are doing those things? Um, I mean, not all, you know, people like, they're not, you know, extroverts or they're not, they might have, they might carry around with them in a day-to-day basis this value of high regard for the organization, but they just don't uh, take the time to share it or they don't have the courage to share it or they're just, too busy. Uh, what, what can organizations do, or even better, what are there any organizations that are doing that well? Where they're just um, helping, um, you know, connect, um, mm-hmm. the, you know, the vision of that employee to some some tool. Do you interview them? What are, what are some steps? I guess that uh, an organization can take. Mm-hmm. Well, first off, they have to uh, open up the opportunities, right? If Companies are not interested in knowing what their employee population is thinking or what kind of ideas they have. Um, they're never going to understand, right? But they can query their employees. They can survey them. They can ask them, what is your opinion about this? What do you think about this? If this situation were to be developed in our organization, would it be of interest to you to participate in that? You know, I'm a believer in, in this. Employees need to take a certain amount of responsibility for their actions. They need to take, they, they need to understand that they're responsible for their careers, right? Mm. And they need to understand that being a silent bystander on the sidelines 
is not the way that they're going to create any kind of engagement with their organization. So there needs to be a certain amount of, um, you know, stepping up to the plate. There you go, Patrick. <laughs> stepping up to the plate and, you know, grabbing that bat and not being afraid to hit a home run for the organization if that organization, you know, opens up the, uh, the field to you. So it really is a two-way street. Organizations need to afford the opportunities. They need to communicate those opportunities. They need to have an interest in their client, in their employees, and a genuine interest, right? And that interest needs to go beyond what are they doing between nine and five here when they're in this building or they're sitting at home working for me. It has to go beyond that. It has to show interest in, you know, understanding that people are multifaceted. Uh, they are more than just, um, I'm going to say, the sum of their parts. Uh, they're people who have different, uh, they wear different hats. They might be dads, moms, sisters, wives, um, chauffeurs, uh, chefs, um, you know, whatever that is, gardeners. It could be anything. So having a genuine interest in knowing more about them and what makes your employees tick um, that shows them that you care about them as people. And that's when companies show their human side. Yes, I love that. I mean, because that is a good point. I mean, we, we, we think the companies, it's their, it's their responsibility to build the brand and carry the brand and, and understand the brand, all of these things. But it's the body of the organization is a collection of people. And when those people mm-hmm. are committed to not only advancing themselves, but advancing um, the great strengths that the organization has to offer, it, it creates opportunities for themselves. Are there opportunities for people within organizations that, that, that do this? Let's say their company is not as committed as them, but they're highly committed to this process. What can that bring to uh, an individual? More attention, more um, opportunities internally, or what do you think? Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, I do. I agree with that. Um, you know, I like, and I hear people use this term a lot, and I like it. It's called entrepreneurship. Mm. So basically, it's when someone is within an organization and they're taking responsibility for their career, they're taking responsibility for their job, they're making perhaps the job bigger than it is. So they're expanding their skills, their knowledge, they're growing themselves, they're learning. They're networking, they're connecting, they're doing all of the things that they should be doing. Now, does that necessarily mean that that's going to be the secret sauce to get them ahead? Not necessarily, but it certainly means they're not being a silent bystander on the sidelines. It doesn't mean that they're being passive aggressive. It doesn't mean that they're not taking responsibility for their for their actions and their career. It it means all of those things. It means that they are doing the right things. If if the company is not in a place or has an interest in that, you know, maybe that company is not a great fit for that individual and that individual will know it. And that's when disengagement might occur. Uh, You know, people are only going to hit their heads on the wall for so long and then they're going to give up and either shut down or go away. So, you know, that's, that's, that, that's, that's the bad part, you know, mm-hmm. when companies are, are not doing the right things by their employees, and they will lose a lot of good people in the doing, but um, you know, people need to understand intrapreneurship. That means I'm responsible, and I am in control of my life and my career. That's great. Individually, the brand ambassador, we've covered a lot about that already. What, in terms of a program, let's say a company wants to enro- essentially take this um, approach in an organized matter. Are there certain um, facets of an employee ambassador program uh, that is um, other companies that you're seeing are, are implementing that are successful? Um, is it the organization, the frequency, um, the creativity behind it? What makes a program for the company successful for an employee ambassador? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So um, some of the companies that are doing it right are giving their employees an opportunity or access, I should say, to social tools, 
right? And we all know mm-hmm. social media is instantaneous. So it's uh, with with a little bit of guidance, with some content, with allowing them to have access. Employees are ready, willing, and able to advocate and to share content for their organizations. Organizations can make it easy for them by having centralized, curated content. And when I say that, I want to also say not telling your employees uh, necessarily what they can and cannot do in their own voice. I think it's very important that, and, and I, a lot of companies that are doing it right, understand that each person in the organization has a voice and it's unique, right? So being able to uh, say, here are the tools, here's some content, um, use your voice and push this content out as you would like, when you would like, um, that is something that we're, we're, uh, we're appreciative of. And I'm going to use the word appreciative. So they're acknowledging that employees are um, communicating about the organization. They're proud to do so. They're taking responsibility for that content. They're acting like a stakeholder, right? And that makes them feel important. And they're allowed to use their voice. Very, very important because nobody wants to feel like they're being harnessed uh, into doing something that is not right for them. So companies need to have a certain amount of trust in their employees. And that trust is going to come through when employees feel that they're being treated well, they're being communicated with, uh, the communications are transparent, there's two-way communication, Leadership is accessible, uh, they're respectful, um, they appreciate who we are, they acknowledge that we're an asset. Um, All of those things are going to make individuals very comfortable and very happy to talk about their organization and the content that their organization has. And those companies that are giving their employees access to social tools, for example, to do this, they, they already know. We have a great reputation, we have great employees, and now we're giving them an opportunity to uh, to tell the world more about us. Uh, and that is a big, big trust builder for employees. Are you seeing a trend in more video content? I know it's a little, hard, a little more challenging to, to uh, produce, but uh, are, you, are you seeing any trends with video? Yes, video is... Um, becoming very, very popular. Um, it is a great way for people to, um, you know, hear people, uh, see people. Um, does that, how do I identify with that person who's speaking? Um, what are they saying? The tone of their voice. It's much more personal, personal, uh, and much more impactful. What's that saying? Um, a picture says a thousand words. Um, I'm going to say that applies to video very, very well. Yeah, maybe a million words <laughs> for video. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah it seems like the behind the scenes and, uh, you know, we're, we're sitting here brewing some coffee in our apartment community and uh, this is what we do to take care of our residents. It seems to me that there's, with these strategies, with the employer ambassador program, there's some strategies to acquire customers through this process. Like, Wow, that's what they do to take care of their employees. I want, I want to, I want to live there. I want to buy my products from that company uh, if if they're that committed from the inside out. I mean, the assumption is that they'll take care of me as a as a resident or a customer uh, if if you were to work with that that company. So, um, so yeah, I have a, a more and yeah, my question always is why is it not why do why don't people do it as much? Is it their fear of social media, the, the risk management of it, the assumptions. We're romantic about what we've done before, um, what we're doing is working, or is it just people are not, they need to enroll upper management? What, do you, what are your thoughts on that? Um, yes to everything you've just said. <laughs> um, it, it's, you know, it could be a myriad of things. Um, leadership who has a mindset of, we've always done it this way. Uh, leadership 
who doesn't have interest in their employee population. They don't view them as assets to the organization. They view them as necessary evils to get the work done. Um, leadership who does not communicate with their employee population because why should they? Um, you know, kind of an attitude. Um, organizations that uh, don't look at their competition. What are they doing that's interesting? What should we be doing that would work here in our organization? Those are things that companies need to consider. How do our customers view us? What are they saying about us? Do, we, do they even care? They should. When, in, when customers are made to feel welcome, made to feel important, that means a lot to the people within the organization who are speaking to those individuals. And generally, and I'm going to, I'm going to use two examples here. When I go into a Starbucks or a Verizon store, I feel like they've rolled out the red carpet for me, right? Mm -hmm. There are other, other, other places I go to. Uh, I'm made to feel like, wow, I can't wait for you to leave and please get out of here as quickly as you can. So we'll tell you anything just to make sure that you can leave. Um, people sense that. Well, at least I sense that, right? I can sense when I'm being uh, made to feel welcome. I can sense when my when I'm not being rushed, when my questions are being answered adequately. Um, even if someone says to me, I don't know, but I'll find out. Um, that means more to me than uh, a quick response that is coming across in a very insincere way. Those are the kinds of things that will absolutely turn any customer off. I don't care who you are. Um, and oftentimes it comes from employees who have no reason to treat anyone well because they themselves aren't treated well and they don't know uh, how to do it. So when organizations treat their employees well, they in turn will treat their customers well. And that's a fact. There is a ton of research out there that supports the direct correlation between happy employee, happy customer. Unfortunately, if companies are not taking the time to pay attention to any of this, none of it matters. They're just going to plod along doing what they've always done and the way they've always done it. And it's worked this well for us for this long. Why do we need to change anything? Well, you need to change things because, you know, companies are changing. Innovation is changing. Technology is changing. And if the company is not keeping up with the times, they're going to be left behind. And they're only going to float for so long. Eventually, they're going to... Um, end up in a bad situation. There are companies out there who have been in business for hundreds of years, who have done everything like it was your grandfather's store, for example. And the news about them is not going well. Um, you know, they're, they're getting in a very bad financial way and, and may eventually just go out of business. Um, when companies go out of business, that doesn't do anyone any good. It's not good for our economy. It's not good for our employment rate. It's not good for the reputation of business in the, in the United States. So there's a lot of reasons why companies want to remain solvent, want to remain innovative, take an interest in their clients and in their, uh, in their employees, and just, you know, show the human side of their business. People don't equate with a building or a facade. They equate with other human beings. They want to relate. They want to understand. They want to connect. And those companies that understand that, they're doing a great job at it. And they're going to get the lion's share of revenue and great employees and great customers because of it. Mm, that's that's fascinating. I, I like what you said about uh, happy employees um, being happy residents mm. or happy customers. And then ultimately – even one step further, uh, happy shareholders. I mean, when you have happy residents and customers, uh, 
they're paying more for your product. Uh, they're staying longer. Um, your marketing cost is lower because you don't have turnover and these types of things. So there is a financial benefit to all of this. This isn't just about um, making people happy, right? I mean, if you've got uh, sort of legacy leaders or, or even uh, people. So it's, it's oftentimes hard to argue with success. I mean, when, when an organization has a balance sheet and a profit and loss statement that's succeeding because they uh, you know, purchased property in a different time period and uh, their debt service and, and income requirements are different than those that uh, purchased today, uh, maybe they don't have to innovate as much because they are, they're receiving a, a certain level of success that's good for them as an organization. I mean, how do you sort of sell the return on investment to these initiatives? Mm, yeah. Well, simply, you know, nothing. Can you, I mean, can you measure like it? Can you measure it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, well, for example, uh, we know, again, tons of research, we know that when employees are disengaged, they're not going to be as productive. And n- n- nothing hits a nerve like when you say to uh, the president or the CEO uh, of an organization, um, you know, annually as a total in this country, in the, in the United States, um, Low productivity, for example, because of disengagement or dissatisfaction with their job at a company, is costing between four hundred and fifty and five hundred and fifty billion dollars. Right, mm. and your organization, meaning Mr. Employer, your organization is impacted by that as well, and included in that number. Okay, you may not know what that number is because you haven't taken the time to figure it out. But you're in there. And coupled with that, you've got other costs, like uh, when you have high turnover, right? And that's going to happen with dis- dissatisfaction and uh, disengagement. So you're going to have increased recruiting cost, onboarding cost, training cost. So imagine that the same 10 positions within an organization are constantly being turned over and the recruiter who's assigned to those 10 jobs does nothing just continue to fill and refill those particular jobs that's costing money right at the very 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 minimal it's costing that company the salary of that recruiter when that recruiter could be in other things to bring their benefit to the organization so nothing fathoms like numbers, right? Yes, and and you know I know um, in my experience, um, you know, just in turnover, you know, you, we talk about the cost and you know recruit, train, retrain people over and over, plus the background sc- screening and the um, distractions of having several interviews and meetings and. And and the impact of a negative candidate experience because you're you know you're you've got more things moving, and if you don't have that employer ambassador program, I mean you have people coming through the recruiting funnel essentially, and they're dumped into uh, an applicant tracking system because your turnover is so high, you have so many jobs posted, and that creates another stack of work and. And and it's just a cycle of cost, but it you know a lot of companies don't measure it. You know they they, they go in and they're looking at you know their their uh, utility costs or they're looking at their uh, equipment costs or their payroll costs. These you know revenue line items, and this stuff is hidden. And so there's a lot of opportunities as an asset manager or financial manager or even just a leader within an organization to make some tremendous financial lift within an organization. It seems uh, by improving all of these things but those are outcomes what's why i pulled you on the show today is that employee ambassador program seems like the starting point to make the those outcomes improve i mean you know you have a good employee ambassador program you now have better uh, recruiting messages out there so then when somebody comes to that 
ATS or applicant tracking system, that long form of 40 questions, <laughs> this high commitment, mm-hmm. hour long process, they're, are they more in, um, likely to invest uh, the time to enter their data as a new potential candidate if you have a strong employer ambassador program or messages out there? Oh, absolutely. Um, job seekers probably for the most part are a little bit jaded when it comes to applicant tracking systems and that's unfortunate because applicant tracking systems are uh, getting a bad rap, right? Um, Because it's really the end user on the employer side who's not necessarily doing things right. Um, And I can tell you a couple of reasons why, but Uh, Certainly, people are not going to take the time to apply for a job at a company that that does not uh, interest them. Uh, A lot, I think, what I have found is, and I've been working uh, as a little side um, cause uh, with a couple of friends of mine, uh, working with job seekers and trying to help them to, you know, clear a path uh, so they can understand what they need to do. And I've been working with uh, my friends for a couple of years now uh, doing this and offering advice and guidance and uh, asking questions and hearing people talk about, you know, what it's like to apply for a job and, you know, all oh, that darn applicant tracking system and blah, blah, blah. And it, what I have found is that it boils down to this. People know what companies they want to work for. Right, they're being they're being as selective as the company is being selective about job candidates. Um, they are taking the time to investigate that employer, even if they don't know someone who works there. Uh, they're going to try to find someone who works there. They want to know, you know, what what the real deal is about that organization. Um, and I will tell you that the number one. The number one reason that uh, job candidates, job seekers are dissatisfied with the job search, lack of communication from the organization mm-hmm. or ultimately a representative from the organization. Uh, right. It's not the, the technology. One. <laughs> no, it is not the yeah, technology. The, the technology gets a bad rap. Right. Uh, and, and it's really it's really unwarranted because it's really the end user uh, on the on the company side, who's just not being responsive. So, and, and that means they're not communicating. They're not conveying the mission, vision, values. They're not taking the time. They're not taking the interest. And that in itself speaks fathoms about the organization. And it and job seekers know this, and it's a big, big red flag for them. So, you know, it's. Uh, in this day and age, especially with social media, job seekers are as savvy as as the organization itself. Hmm, that's good. That's good stuff. Well, geez, I really enjoyed our conversation today. Um, you know, looking deeper at the employee ambassador program and finding out the financial benefits, uh, not only to the bottom line, but also the brand, both internally and externally, is always something that is, interests me. Uh, and, and there's financial reasons to be interested in it. And uh, I just want to uh, thank you, uh, Cindy, for taking the time to come on the show today. And uh, if you have any other uh, follow-up thoughts or anything like that, you can reach out to Cindy. We're going to put uh, her information in the show notes. Uh, Cindy, do you have any uh, wrap-up thoughts you want to share with the, the listeners? Yeah, uh, I'm just going to be very succinct with this. Simply, when it comes to organizations, give your employees a reason to want to be an advocate for you. That's it. Mm, simple. That's, mm-hmm. a, that's a great message. Thank you, Cindy, and we appreciate you sharing the time with us today. Thank you very much. It was great to catch up with you, Patrick, and I really appreciate uh, the opportunity. Thank Absolutely. you. Thank you. If you get a few moments... Please subscribe, rate, and review this show on iTunes or on your favorite platform. This helps others discover our program, and it tells us we're doing a good job. 
thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed the Multifamily Leadership Podcast. For show notes and other resources, visit multifamilyleadership.com.